The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. Um, I'm bringing this up. I think it's just a security type thing because I, God wouldn't let me bring any notes this morning. I don't know what we're going to do. Um, I do have a little bit to share. For the past few weeks, um, like my, uh, like like my dad was saying uh, right before I got up here, uh, we've been ex- I've been experiencing some stuff some things that the Lord's been just, I don't, I don't know why, I don't know what's, why me or whatever like that. I don't care. My, my, my whole, in this, in this journey, particularly what's going on right now, I feel is, is very prophetic as far as what's happening. I'm not necessarily very prophetic, you know, point out names, name call, you know, this and that and stuff like that. But for right now, I believe that um, within the next few weeks that the Lord's been going to be really pouring out some stuff, um, as, especially in this congregation. So hold on to your seats, hold on to the carpet, whatever's, whatever's more appropriate for you. Um, oh gosh, it's been such a, it's, it's been a, um, it's been a, it's been a ride. When I was speaking uh, last, was a couple weeks ago. Got a little echo. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had uh, spoken on the heaven on, being heaven on earth, our kingdom, the kingdom within, and sharing that just like the disciples did and whatnot. Um, I didn't realize that where the Lord was taking us, though, in that there is a place that I. <laughs> this is going to be tough because this is this is like. I'm, cr- I'm crushed. I'm broken. And so, mind, just bear with me while I'm speaking, if you can, and listen for the Holy Spirit, because He's going to be speaking through me. I'm not going to be there, okay? I don't want to be here. I don't want you to see me. I want you to see Jesus, okay? And so, as, as the best of my ability in me, I am yielding to Him right now and allowing Him to, to do what He wants. But I started on that <clears throat> that little kick where I was like, the 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 signs, the wonders, the the greater works. Where are those in the church? You know, and we are seeing some of this and some of that, and and as the gifts flow in 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 and out of people um, in other countries. But what about the U.S. and what about our church and you know like that? And and that's what I spoke about prior. But what in, what what happened as I began there I just I started out when I was not feeling well and I and I had the flu for many days and while I had that flu I was like God why aren't I getting healed how come I can't you know I, healing is for us and now we're and how come you're letting me go through this stuff and I think a lot of people can relate, whatever you're going through, whatever you had, if you had any type of sickness or illness or do. um, We think those thoughts sometimes, especially when we're down and we're tired. And and so, but what I, what I I saw was a trans, uh, a transformation in my point of view and my perspective and my attitude changed. And what happened was, how that happened was, is, I began not to care about my garbage. I don't care that I'm sick. I only want Jesus. And if you can't get to that point, which I know you can, because everybody can, then you're going to be missing out on a lot, and you're going to be mumbling, complaining, murmuring, complaining. But that's what happened. Regardless, I said, if regardless, I told the Lord, regardless, 
if I get a healing or not immediately or whatever way you want to do it or not. I'm not looking for a manifestation. I'm not looking for the healing. I'm looking for the healer and the one that is above all and is in all. And the more I, deep I went into just that perception, you're not going to get a lot of scripture today because I don't have notes and I don't have it outlined. And I'm not sorry. I just want to, I want to be poured out. The deeper that you go in to that desire for him and the Holy Spirit, it, it's already there, right? Those of you who have, who have had an experience and baptized in the Holy Spirit and received the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues, you have this already. It's a desire for Him. And the problem is, is we sometimes ignore it. We go through our daily routines and it gets less and less and it's not that big a deal. But how many of you are actually excited in the morning when you wake up and you can get a chance to read and pray and ask and talk to God? I'm, you don't understand, you don't even fathom, like most of you are going to get this. You're going to, you're going to have to because you, you got, you, you brought yourself into this church. So you're going to receive this. If my, my new baby boy, Landon, if he wakes up at three or four in the morning, I'll stay up and praise the Lord. I'll be exhausted at night, <laughs> and I'll, have, I'll want to go to bed at 7. But it's like, I don't want to go back to sleep. I, I start thinking, oh, dear Lord, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to get out of this, and I don't want to. Let's not just give me more, but, but let me be poured out. The one thing that, that he told me that, that kind of stirred me up a little bit is we're, we're all at different levels. How many know we're all different levels? There's, the scripture would, you know, states it that, you know, they calls it the, 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 the child, the young man, and the, the father. And each of the, the different um, levels needs a particular type of food. The, the first is the child, and it needs the milk. And, and that's when, you know, we can still run into temptation and fall and trip and then ask God for forgiveness and he forgives us immediately. That's our salvation experience, right? He, we, we get saved and all that stuff is gone, but we still are starting just to walk or crawl and we still need the milk of the word. When we, once we get to a point where we're, and, and everybody, you've heard tons of teachings on this, I'm sure, but once we get to the point where we're, we're starting to walk and, and everything and those temptations become more uh, difficult to, to deal with, but yet you can overcome them. That's, that's where you get into the young adult, or the, you know, in the scriptures where it's, it's saying you've overcome the, the wicked one. And I'm really super simplifying this just because I don't know what God wants, but I, I saw the three levels and I, and I wanted to share. When you're in that, in that second level, it's kind of like you're, you're realizing, um, you know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And it's like Jesus was the way you got saved. Jesus is the truth that you have to recognize that he's in you now, Christ in you. And when you get to this third level, which there's not a lot of people in the, in the Father level, but it's the, it's the giving out stage. It's the, it's the being able to pour into other people stage. And the thing is, is when we get to that point, if we want to, which we're supposed to, that's his goal, is the full stature, that what I've found is that there's really nothing left of, of us. You know, we're all called to be a particular part of the body, right? And so if we're a toe and we are jealous of your, your wife that is an eye, then you're in you're already you're still in the in the in the first stages of the, of this growth but what i'm saying is is when that in that third stage when you are completely utilized as that toe or foot or whatever god has used you in the body um, he wants to express himself through you 
to be that particular thing that he needs you to be in the church. And that's why we need everybody. And all believers, we need all believers. We need everybody. So we don't lose our uniqueness, but we, we, are, we completely burn up all the rest of our wants, desires. There's a funny thing that I read the other day, and even, even um, Catherine Coleman mentioned it. She's like, you know, when she was asked how much it costs, she says, it, it costs all. It costs everything. But it's not something, believe me, that you're not, you're not going to miss it. The thing is, is when we look at it in our natural flesh, what we're going to be given up to be a follower of Christ, we already did when we accepted him as Christ, our Savior. We just aren't walking it out. Really. When by the time we get from, we think we are hot stuff in, in the second part, we think we've overcome the, the wicked one, and we have, and we had some, you know, notches on our belt. We think, our, we, you know, this is, this is it. This is awesome. But what I want to tell you is most of the church is in the, in the second. Yeah? Most of this church is in the second stage. The third stage is where everybody's going to be. This is, I don't even, I, I can't explain it. <laughs> But there is nothing in me left. I don't. The, 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 they gave they gave me something to read the other day, and I and I can't remember exactly who it was or or anything. But he he explained a certain aspect of what I am feeling right now. Is we've learned so much that we had this awesome revelation that Jesus is Lord, right? We we already know that He's our Savior when we asked Him into our hearts. And we had in this church, not even that long ago, I mean, it's part of our ministry, actually, it's been said in one way or another, but Jesus is Lord. And what does that mean? That means that we go to him, he put, we put him above everything else in our lives. And what I was used to, and this is what really ministered to me, was what I was what I was used to is that you know God first you know wife and family second ministry third and then everything is underneath but what is the most fantastic thing that God is doing right now in that third level you're not just taking it from God first and you you know your family second ministry third whatever it is God only. Don't get offended yet. <laughs> it didn't erase all your other the people that are important in your life and things. It's God only and everything else that was derived from him, your friends, your family, your brothers and sisters, are all secondary expressions of who he is, of your first love. We're not just, it's not just a triangle of what's important anymore. It is God first and only him. He gave me my wife, and she is just an expression of him. There is, this is mind-blowing. If you have ears to hear, Soak it in, because if you have a, a decent marriage, you think you do, wait till you actually get this in the spirit, because what happens is, is it becomes not just works that you would treat your wife like Jesus would treat the church. It becomes a whole new expression of love and honor towards God. It's, it blows, it blew my mind. It's so far beyond what I could think because I'm, I'm experiencing it internally by the Holy Spirit. So she's no longer second to me, to, to, to God. She is an expression of him who is first, who is the only 
<laughs> if it doesn't hit your heart, at least try to get it into your brain <laughs> and let it soak in, you know. But this is, and that, that's not the way to do it. We want to go the other way, from the heart up. But I want to be able to at least stir you up for a desire because where you're at, there's always more. No matter where you're at, if you're on the floor, there's always more. But if you're thinking that you are on top of the world, there is always more. God always goes deeper in every single scripture. It boggles my mind why anybody would else would need other books. Because he is continuously unfolding his will before us. It's a continual movement. Without movement, we become stagnant. He, and, and he would just move on to somebody else if you're not moving. And what I found was there's a, there is a place in the spirit that you cannot be moved. That stuff doesn't matter. Sickness doesn't matter. Pain doesn't matter. Where you're at doesn't matter. And you can't be moved by the stuff that comes at you. You can feel it, boy. You, once, you, once you get it, you, you really, I feel a lot of resistance everywhere. But it's, it's like, you might as well just laugh at it. I want this for everybody. And I know my dad got it, Jennifer got it, but this is so exciting. There, there is a point where there cannot be any doubt. And I said this in, my, in the last message, that I said there, there can't be any doubt in his word, in him, in the living word. And, the, and, and when that happens, Not only do you, do you, you receive and, and you know, we're, like, we're like vessels and we're filled, we are continuously filled and continuously flowing out. And there's no striving. When you're in the, the, the perfect will of the Lord, which is not work, the work is get out of the way. The work is that my preferences don't matter. The things that I thought about my life, where I would be, what I wanted, my career, none of it matters until you let it die and let him resurrect whatever. The point is, is you, you don't need to get it back. I want to encourage you that there's a place in the Holy Spirit that you may never have been, but he wants it so bad for you. When you feel it's an experience where there has to be a desire for him so much that most people, you know, a lot of people, I wouldn't say necessarily most, but when they're, they're on their, their last their last ditch effort or they're, they're on the, the, the end of their rope basically is what, and everything is falling out from underneath them. And then they cry out to God for help. Mo a lot of people do it that way. I don't want that for you guys. Some of you are at that point. But those of you who aren't, please develop, listen. There's a, there's a desire that he built in you. It's in, it's, it's in you already to know him. Physi it's even physiologically sound. Our, our, our brain is, was built to know him. Our spirits, his spirit in us calls out. If we just pay attention and say, Lord, I want more. I don't just want more of you to fill me but I want you to erase me. I want to be up here in front of people and be able to share what is going on inside my spirit without any of me being involved. 
I don't want you guys to see me. I'm just this little short guy up there with the big nose and a beard. I don't care. The thing is, is the Holy Spirit wants to stir you up for a desire for Him. And that's the beginning. Because when you desire Him, your other stuff will start to fade away as far as the power behind it. Those of you who are, are messed up with, with any type of temptation stuff, the sexual stuff, if you haven't dealt with it, deal with it now. Get help, get prayer. There's, a, there's a, addictions and, 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 and uh, sexual stuff he's dealing with, and, and, it's, and it's going like that, and we're seeing huge results, and you will get it because there's a, there's a particular type of grace that's involved right now because he wants people to get healed up. He wants people to be prepared because there's going to be an awakening. And when the awakening comes, you're not only, you're, you're going to be in trouble if you got that stuff hanging around. You're not going to get it. You're going to see all these people flopping on the floor. You're going to be seeing, no, listen to me. There's one thing, there's, there's one thing, there's one thing that I, I kept seeing throughout the couple, last few weeks was this, this, um, this picture of daddy, I love the, 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 the daddy, um, how soft and, and awesome our daddy is, right? But there's a point where he becomes not just Abba Father, but he becomes the warrior, the mighty God of battle, the everlasting God, the Prince of Peace. There's, there has to be a movement from, there has to be like a growth. We're not just asking, we're not just saying, thank you, Daddy. We are becoming the way, you know, we're, we're going to be showing Him through us, and it's going to be powerful. And He wants to be able to break forth a new perception that it's not just Daddy gives us presents and daddy heals us, and daddy this and that, that it's going to be, I am the righteousness of God through Christ. And when you read the scriptures, when, when in Isaiah, and even, even Jesus quoted it when, before he, you know, was actually doing anything in the synagogues, is for the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he's anointed me, and he is upon you, for he has anointed you to do the same. As believers, this is a very powerful thing. We don't want anything washed down. We don't want anything to make people feel just feel good. We want to have people be good, yeah. not just act, but be walk in health. There has to be a point, and it's possible. For each and every one of us, even my daughter that's <laughs> running around, that when we get to the point where we have allowed and yielded to him so much, so deeply, so just I am out of the way, that I want you, I, I want you guys to experience it. If, if you, I believe that if you in all of your flesh is completely broken like that and yielded, that we should be walking in health. We should, all the time. There's no, there, there's no doubt. Because why? Because every single cell in your body should be screaming out, holy, son of God, you know, it's, do it. Allow the Holy Spirit to do it through you. We are the container. Our bodies, everything. If there's any infection, if there's any thing that's in your body that shouldn't be there, it should be screaming bloody murder to get out. Itself. It, it, it's not there. It shouldn't be there. And it knows it. And I think there's going to be a time that comes 
and it should be soon, that we're going to start seeing that, and it's going to be spontaneous. It's going to be between you guys. Like, I don't care if I get, you know, gifts of healings and all that stuff when, when the Spirit is really poured out like that again. But if some of you do, and people that are sitting next to you, all of a sudden, whoop, my hip doesn't hurt anymore. Were you praying, you know, were you praying for me? Some of you are going to be moving in the gifts like that. And some of you aren't. Some of you are going to have a calling that's other than that. Who cares? As long as, as long as you're doing what the Lord wants you to do at that time, right? There's this one, one thing that I read, a, preach, a sermon that I, I read, um, and the guy is, is not really named uh, per se. It was just a, a nameless Russian guy who came to England um, back in the ni- early 1900s. And he said, it, he said it was the way that I experienced it, that I am experiencing it, and that I want you to experience it. it, it and he said it the way that it feels like that, that's what I'm going through. And that's what I want for you guys. So <clears throat> what was cool about it was he, he, he was from Russia. He moved to England. He didn't know the language very much. And, um, but in the process, he, he learned very quickly, like abnormally fast, supernaturally. And when he would preach the, the, the preach Jesus, people would get healed, and, and he worked in signs and wonders and miracles. And, and so what happened was he drew crowds. This is unnamed. I don't know who this guy is. But this was a story that was used in, a, in, a, in another message that I was reading um, back in the 1900s. He was pressed by the crowds to tell him where the power came from. Everybody knows it came from God, but how did he get it? And how, you know, you could, you could tell people would do that. Wherever power goes, people follow. And so when he was pressed, he was like, I don't know. I think it's just too, um, it's too intimate between me and God. I don't know if it'll, it'll be that good for me to explain, try to explain something that that's so personal. And they pressed further and, 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 and egged him on. And he finally did. And he said this, he said this, which was, I just thought it was so profound. He said, well, first God called me. Easy enough. But then his presence became so precious to me that I found myself wanting to obey everything that he told me to do. We need that. We need to, while you're reading your scriptures, we want to meet the author. We want to keep it as sacred. We want to keep it as precious that he is speaking to you directly because his, his thoughts are continuously towards you. Yeah? His love never fails. It's a constant. You can't get away from it. Sin separates us. Sin is a separator. But it's not from his, his love. It's always there. Sim separates us from his presence. And that's a very cold place. I want to, I want to go on. After they pressed him and he told him those two things. Every time I, he would call, I would obey. Because his presence was precious to me. And then... What happened? In order for him to get to the, the next part, he yielded. I yielded, he says. And the next thing I did was I yielded. And the next thing I did was I yielded. Okay. Some people is going over their heads. Some people are actually getting this. Is you can go deeper no matter where you're at. You yield. And you, can, you feel like you can allow Christ to do whatever in you. And you can go so much deeper. It'll keep you up, and it'll keep you up in the morning if you woke up like I did. <laughs> it'll keep you up at night because you'll be excited to meet with him. After he yielded so much and went so deep in his prayer... I realized that I was simply clothed 
with another power altogether. And I realized that God took me, tongue, thoughts, and everything. And I was not myself, but I was Christ working through me. This is what I want for all of you. But it, it costs. What does it cost? It costs all of you. Everything that you thought about you, every, every hope, every dream, is nothing compared to what God can do. And this isn't just hearsay. This is if you would just get to the point where you desire Him more than anything. You pay attention to Him more than anything. And I don't mean just reading your scriptures. I mean paying attention to the desire that the Holy Spirit is already burning in there. You know, it reminds me of the, the, the two on the road to Emmaus. And they were walking with the risen Lord and they had no idea. But then when they discussed it later, they were like, oh, wasn't your heart burning? Our hearts burned in our chest while he was expounding on the scriptures. We need that. It's there in us, already there. Pay attention to it. There's at a point where I was, I was going through, and I mean, there's literally everything. I have scriptures and notes and, I mean, things that I've read that have, have just impacted me so greatly, even in the last two weeks, that it has become alive. When you get to a point where you're in that level three, it goes from Jesus is Lord to Jesus is my life. It, 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 we started out, Jesus is our Savior. Thank you. And then we go to Jesus is Lord, which we need so desperately to grasp. And that was, that was like our whole ministry here, has how to make Jesus Lord, right? The, th the third level that God is wanting us to take, He needs us to take, He is desperately pursuing you, if you would just reach out to Him right now and take this by the Spirit, is He wants us to be lived through. I can't even take it anymore, so we're probably going to end up having to pray for people. Um, but it's because what's, what's, so, what's so hard about this for me is there's so much in me and I want to get it out. And the thing is, is that's what, that's what it's all about. This, this, third, this third season that the Lord is bringing, bringing upon us is, is, an, is going to be an astronomical outpouring. It might even start in our church. I'm not, I don't care. I just want it to happen. And I want you guys to get a little bit of what I've been tasting for the last few weeks. I don't know how that happened. I was just, in order for my dad to get it, I was just talking to him off the cuff about how pretty much every, every organ in your body, everything I submitted to the Lord, and it is all crying out that it is all possible. <laughs> and then my dad got it. I said, every part of my body is it. Everything is possible through Christ. He wrote it. We believe it. And it will happen. It's, there's nothing easier. Amen. Our doubt and our fear comes from our own stuff in the world, the flesh, the devil. But we have to take him at his word. How, you, know, you look at it, uh, Hebrews 11.11 11 and, 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 and you see there was a, baby, a child born to a, a, an old woman but what does she say? She says, well, God, I believe that he was who he says he was and that he is true to his word. And a miracle happened. Why? Because he took him at his word. We needed to start point blank in the scriptures and saying, 
It is written. How did, the, how did the devil get defeated in the wilderness? It is written. So we just got to believe. We need to believe not just with our head. We don't need to just hope for something in the future. We need to believe out of, out of the substance of faith because he's already going to be depositing it in you. He's already done the work. He's already doing the work. He's fulfilling the work if you allow him to. This is going to be good. It's going to be good. Huh? Yeah. I don't know what time it is or how this is going to work, but... I just want to share one thing real quick. I judge every move of God by the fruit that it produced. And so you might all laugh, but I want to tell you what happened. Every day he's asking, did you get it yet? Did you get it yet? And it gets a little irritating. I'm going, hey, wait a minute. I'm the senior pastor here. <laughs> what did he get it first for? Does that sound like flesh? Does flesh do stuff like that? Yeah. Well, anyway. He comes over every day. Did you get it yet? And I go, no, come on over and impart. And he came over and he just was just talking. And all of a sudden he said, all things are possible with God. Only believe. And it hit. And I started laughing. I was like a slide out of my chair. And I go, I got it. And Jennifer looks. <laughs> but let me show you how it manifested just to show you, because I look for afterwards, I want to see the change. What did it do? I better not mention names here, but I was driving on the street, and I saw a pizza delivery that I normally go, yuck, there's that pizza company again. And all of a sudden, I saw that pizza delivery thing, and it was like, all of a sudden, it was like the Jesus in me was going, oh, Lord, I realized I've been, I received forgiveness. I've been cursing them without even knowing it. Oh, Lord, send them someone to teach them how to make pizza. <laughs> I mean, I scared myself with that response. Like, that's Jesus. And all of a sudden, everybody was getting loving in her side. A car pulled in front of me. I don't know about you, but on the road's not my strong point for sanctification. I don't know where you're at. But I'm driving on the road, and there's this little old lady in front of me going 10 miles an hour in a 45. And I saw the little handicapped thing hanging from a rear, mu rear view mirror. And instantly, instead of, oh, brother, it didn't even come out. It went, oh, Lord, help her. She's obviously got a handicap of some sort. I just released prayer. That's Jesus. That is not Dennis. That's Jesus. I'm just... Then we went out to the restaurant, and I got my three shrimp tacos like I always get. I ate two, and I felt this satisfaction. I always eat all three. But there was no, does any of this make sense? There was no drivenness to finish. He, he did that and with, he did that with my saying, coffee. I had mentioned in my, in, in my, the last time that I had spoke, and I, and I said, I, oh, I touched a sacred cow because I said, he's going he's gonna to deliver us some of us from coffee. And I, ever since this has happened, I, can, I, can, I usually make a pot of coffee, and by the time I have one cup, it's usually cold. I forget. And it used to be my lifeblood. I, I was a pot, of drink, you know, a pot a day drinker or more. And what the Lord showed was <laughs> that you entered into a moderation, that the appetites are there, they're God-given, but moderation is the rule of the Spirit. And I'm, I was seeing this, and, every, and the we that we talked about last week, I've got we. It is impossible for me to detach and not be including God in any good or bad scenario. It's a replaced life. And even the child, the young man, and the father... I've elevated that to a higher dimension now. I've got the young man now where basically you're abiding as a constant. The word of God abides in you. 
That's, as Jason knows, that's not, you, you're biblically literate. The word of God is abiding in you and you've overcome the wicked one and the word is strong. That means the abiding living word. It's the living word that we're experiencing now. It's Jesus coming in as your value system. And I literally prophesied it last week saying what God's going to be doing is your value system is going to be Jesus himself, not ink on a page value system, but him Years ago, he always got my attention with that. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing asunder soul and spirit, joints and marrow, so discern thoughts and intents and heart. And almost everybody, when you're, when you're repeating that, is picturing their Bible. But verse 13 says, all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. It's the living word. I don't care how biblically literate you are, you're going to have to enter into that living Jesus because that's where the se- even just the second level is. It's going to be abiding is going to be the normative. But where J- Jason and I are, I, level three is I cannot contain this and not see other people benefited by it. There is an agony in me that I'm going, I know that I know, but I know that I know. What good is it if it's just me and Jesus? I want it imparted, and I don't know how. I just know some of the indications. I just know how it infected me. I don't, what are you going to do? We, I could make a religion out of it and do what Jason did when I got hit with it. All things are possible with God, only believe. That would probably irritate some people, right? Because you can't, just, there's no method. But if the God hunger is on the inside of you, for heaven's sakes, let him out. It's like a tiger in a cage. Let him out. He'll prove himself. We can't prove him. We can't figure it out. We don't know what we're doing. How many are hungry right now? How many want prayer? Come on up. I don't know how it works, but we're going to believe that you're going to open up and hunger after God. Jason, let's just pray for him. So, Father, right now, we're just going to release impartation. As soon as we pray for you, just go back and sit down in your seat, and you yield, yield, and then yield some more. And don't think when you've yielded, you're done yielding. So, Father, right now, we just release, release that impartation. Release that impartation. Go back to your seat and soak in it. I receive Jesus as Lord of my life now. No more just my Savior. He's Lord. And I want that impartation right now in Jesus. Only believe. Only believe and yield and yield and yield and yield for more. Go to your seat as soon as you get prayer so more people can come up. In Jesus' name, yield, yield, yield. I want that impartation. Uh, and this means it's going to cost you everything in the way of yourself. All your dreams and visions, I've received forgiveness for holding on to anything. Jesus is going to be my all. He's my all. And he's not taking anything from you. He's going to give you himself. He's going to be your exceedingly great reward. I receive it. I receive it. I want that changed life. I want that moderation. I want that rule of God. I want him. I'm going to do this out loud for everybody that's here. Uh, I'll go down the line still, but Lord, everything that's in me, everything that you're doing through me, Lord. Lord, you were broken for us like the alabaster box where your perfumes would just go over all of us. Father, you called me to be broken alabaster box for these people. Lord, pour out your spirit upon them, Lord. Would you give them just the desire, Father, to chase after you, God, that I've broken, Father, for you. I just let you flow. Just let you flow. Let them experience you the way that you want me to show them. Hallelujah. Everything, everything that I have, is yours. That we're going to give to you. We're going to pour it out. Everything that I have that God's doing for me, pour it out right now in Jesus' name. We just, <laughs> just
I don't know who's got prayer and who didn't get prayer. If you got prayer, please please sit down and let someone else come up. Shoot it at a kit. Come on up. Come on up. Oh, yes. Yield. You open the heart and you just release. 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 All that I want is you. You and you alone. You're all I want. You're all I ever needed. You're all that I want. You're all that I ever needed. I want to move into the more. I want to move into the supernatural more to where he is all. He is all. He's all. Just release it, release it, release it. <laughs> Remember, you open up the gut. That's the door of the heart. He don't come into your head. He come. You open up the door of your heart. Drink. Don't think. Feed. Don't read. That's it. There you go. There you go. You're good. Gee. I think Pam already got it. I think she got it. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's go. Yes, yes. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Good yielding. Good yielding. I release. I want more. He's my all in all. I want to know him as my all in all. I want to know him as my all in all. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Da, da, da. For me, it was just a joy bubble. It wasn't lightning bolts. It was just a joy bubble on the inside. And then from that time on, it was we. Everything happened to us, me and Jesus, us. Release that impartation in Jesus' name. It's only Jesus, Jesus only. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, these four right here are having too much fun right now already. Yes, only Jesus. Jesus is all I want. All. It's all about him. <laughs> it's a replaced life. That old Romans 6, that old, that old separated self died when Jesus died. Ah, it's only me and him now. It's only me and him. <laughs> this is good. This is good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're praying for baby. We're praying for Abby. We're praying for Sean. We just release. I want Jesus and Jesus only. 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 No idols. There's nothing, even my things that God's promised of me will not, will all be set aside. And we pray for a little Josiah. <laughs> Feel the anointing on this little one there. She da 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 ko da 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 she da da da. Yes, yes, impartation, impartation, impartation. Very good, very good. Do you remember what the instructions were? Don't look for lightning bolts, look for yield, and then yield some more, and see if there isn't a change in your responses. There's more anointing in the responses. It's almost like, I can remember when my dad got saved, and my sister would sit in front of the television without her glasses, for my dad's pet peeve. She would sit this close to the television rather than put her glasses on, and my dad got saved. He just loved yelling at her for that. He got saved, he walked in the house, and he looked at her and he went, <sighs> that's what happens. That's what happens, that's a good explanation. He says, I have my composure. I'm going, that's the peace of God, Dad. That's what that happened. If all of a sudden, 
in the hustle and bustle of life, you start finding yourself praying for the pizza guy. Oh, oh, instead of cursing them with what rotten pizza is, oh, God, just send them someone that knows how to make pizza. Jason noticed it with coffee. I noticed it with food. It was like a kicked-in moderation. But it's like all of those appetites are legitimate, but under lordship, they take on a moderation without trying. This is not a diet. This is not a fast. It's moderation. It's the rule of God. I'm telling you, even that second level, the way we've taught it and even the way Jason mentioned it, I'm telling you, God's going to take even the second level to a higher degree. That second level is going to be abiding. Abiding in a replaced life to where it is us, Jesus and I. The word of God, the living word, is abiding in me. And I'll tell you what, the baby ones, and I've taught all of this stuff from my own experience, but since this experience, I've got to elevate that. You know what the baby step is? Little children, your sins are forgiven. Do you know that we're still teaching people how to forgive throughout the body of Christ? I mean, we literally have taught tens of thousands of people how to forgive properly. That's baby level. I want this church to move into the in, to move beyond a forgiveness lifestyle into where the living word abides in me and it's a replaced life. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives. But Jason's passion and mine is, is this is so wonderful the part that bothers me is I want it reproduced in everybody. I don't care that I have it. I would just rather, I would rather that death worketh in me, that life would work in someone. That's my prayer. I don't care what opposition I run into. If it's going to make life work in someone else, fine. So be it. Paul said, I, I would give my, I would give myself to be accursed for the salvation of, of my Jewish brethren. That kind of an attitude is potential in God, not in the flesh. Your flesh doesn't want to do those things, but the God in you wants it. He wants maturity. He wants you to grow up. He wants you to get out of self and into others. You are called to bring many sons unto glory. But you yourself have to get beyond all of that fundamental me and God. Every time you say something happened to me, you're actually in sin as far as I'm concerned. Well, I got sick. So what you're saying is, I down here got sick and Jesus is in heaven. That's separation. A separation attitude is a sinful attitude. He came in you at the salvation and never left. Sin is separation. Change that separation mentality to where you are walking in a supernatural we all the time. As soon as you say I, you've made a separation. You're thinking about him in heaven and poor me down here. And don't tell me people don't do this. I know they do it, but it's going to change. That's what this move of God's going to do. For the first step it's going to change is it's all of a sudden you're going to become God inside minded. You're going to become God conscious, son conscious instead of separation conscious. That, that's how you'll know it changed when separation conscience is not your primary conscience. No more poor me. Look what happened. I got a flat tire. We got a flat tire, Jesus. How are we gonna, what are we going to do next? Is that going to be part and parcel for the days ahead? Hunger after it, please. And don't get discouraged if you go, I don't think I got it because he irritated me for three weeks. <laughs> At first, it wasn't. At first, I was thrilled for him. But then every day, did you get it yet, Dad? Did you get it yet, Dad? Did you get After a while, you start going. You're, you might get it. <laughs> huh? don't, don't go that route. I saw that you, in other times. You will of, get it. Huh? You will get it. That's, that's, what that's I, the whole thing. You will get it, but you just stay open. Yeah. Don't put a time limit on it because that will be your destruction. You have three weeks, though, so. <laughs> That's all. All right. Are we ready? Are we going to have testimonies next week? It's we. From this day forward, the living word abides in me. And my responses will be whatever happens, good or bad, happens to 
us. See, you don't die to self. You don't ever stop being a self. It's just who's Lord of that self. Separation and sin and the prince of the power of the air or Jesus. This self is an us. Wow, I wonder if the psychiatrist and the psychologist would like that <laughs> term. If I walked in and told them, we're having, we are having a good day. <laughs> we could be in trouble, huh? Let's just pray. Father, you who began a good work are going to continue it, and we're going to see, we're going to see remark. Oh, see, see, there's an anointing on it, so I know it's going to happen. There's going to be a remarkable transformation in the hearts of God's people, and it's, we just don't, don't uh, hold out and don't fall into the trap. Oh, I didn't get anything. There's something wrong with me. That's the oldest trick in the devil's book. No, you just haven't received it yet. All things are possible with God. Only receive. Oh, that's what worked for me, so we can't be. Can't be. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Don't you want to be others-oriented? To be so secure in us that it's, it's it, like Jason said, it's really not even others' orientation. It's God orientation, and it transfers to others. You see the God in everybody. You see the, the, the longing is in your heart that they would have more of him. Then you know you've got something. Amen. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive123.com. Did you know that we have an online school available? Hi, I'm Pastor Jason Clark. We invite you to join our international community of almost a thousand students currently enrolled in a school like no other. Team Embassy equips believers to live in the spirit by giving them the how-to tools for wholeness, intimacy with God, and living the abundant life Jesus promised us. You will learn how to heal emotional pain quickly and completely. You'll discover amazing keys to tap into the fruit of the Spirit and practice the presence of God as a lifestyle. Exciting courses available include the 60-day challenge, self-deliverance, healing rejection, codependency, intimate prayer, the functions of the human spirit, and many, many more. It's formatted so that you could take it with you on all your mobile devices. Sign up today at training.teamembassy.com. Be transformed. Become all God created you to be. You will never be the same.